All right, so we're back yet again with the Eagle. I'm gonna do another quick flight just to test a few uh, few more changes we made. For one, my analog feet looks a lot better, I think, now. Um, you see we're looking into the sun there, and it's actually the moon right up there. Uh, but anyway, the colors look better, and it seems to be a little bit better as far as brightness and contrast, at least on the sunny day. Um, but we've made a couple of other small changes to the TECS parameters and stuff like that, which I will talk about later in the air. So let me go ahead and get in the air now. Armed. We're going to go ahead and arm and taxi out on the runway and take off as usual. Fly by wire A. Go ahead and take off and fly by wire A. Like I like to do. Alright, so let me go back to cruise mode now. Cruise. And basically what I want to see here is how stable the throttle is, and does it porpoise in the pitch axis, and does the throttle surge like it was doing on the previous flight. So I made a couple of changes that should um, address that. That TECS throttle dampening parameter that I had raised, I went ahead and went set that back to default. And I increased the uh, time constant for the TECS control loop that controls your throttle and pitch to manage airspeed and altitude. And I did that at the suggestion of one of the autopilot developers who's been a longtime friend of mine and he's helping me out with this stuff. And I kind of showed him some of what was going on on the last flight and asked for some suggestions there. And that's kind of the first thing he suggested. So that's what I'm trying today. Um, I do see a slow oscillation in the pitch axis, but throttle is definitely a lot smoother than it was yesterday. We don't have that surging throttle. Everything looks good. Um, I'm watching the altitude right now. It's, let's see, it's from 147 up to about 150, I think. One forty-eight to one fifty. See, so yeah, it's staying within a couple of feet of where what its target is, which actually I'm not even sure what the target altitude is right now, because I just kind of set it to cruise mode at some random altitude. I didn't even really notice where I was at. Um, but everything definitely feels good right now. And one other thing I did, I actually reset the the level on the pitch axis. Um, I looked at my log from yesterday's flight and while maintaining altitude in cruise mode over an extended period of time I was averaging about 0 0.85 degrees pitch up with the current cruise configuration. So I went ahead and, and set that. There's a parameter for it. I forget. I can actually pull that up and look right now. I'm just going to let an airplane cruise right now while I pull this up. And I did hear it raise the thr throttle a bit there. But it's probably just uh, dealing with some wind or something like that. We do have a little bit more wind today than we did on the previous flight. I'm kind of watching we're coming over these trees right now too. So that parameter that I used to set the pitch level axis is trim pitch CD. Which is trim pitch in centi degrees. So I raised that by 0 0.85 degrees to match what the or the autopilot was actually flying to control level. Watch when I have a, a large bird up there, vulture. It's actually a couple of them up there. They're probably riding some thermal lift. I don't want to pay attention where we're at out here over these trees. Flying somewhat lower than we typically do over wooded areas. So I'm actually going to gain some altitude. 
that'll give me a chance to see how well it manages throttle during a climb in a throttle control mode as well. So it's something I actually didn't do on the previous light, which probably would have helped been able to tune some of this stuff, but seems fine right now. It's pushing about 56-57% throttle, actually a little bit less than that now. To hold about 5 to 7 feet per second climb rate is kind of varying a little bit. So we're going to try to level off at about 350 or so. And we overshot that a bit. So I'm actually going to... Well, maybe we didn't. I thought we'd overshot it some. We'll see where it settles at. And then we're going to try to get it to maintain about 350. It's actually a little bit lower than that. Or maybe not. It's kind of dead on 350 actually. And we should have a little bit more wind up here. I want it to get a little bit higher up here just so I don't have to worry about the trees and stuff down there while I'm not really paying as much attention to that. And we might also see some of those buzzards, or I call them buzzards, I think they're actually turkey vultures. It's kind of a local, local term used to describe any of the large black birds out here that that use thermal lift. It's kind of what everybody calls them. But anyway, um, I definitely do see an improvement by using the... Uh, time constant for TECS control loop rather than throttle dampening. Um, and probably resetting the level with the trim pitch CD parameter might have attributed to that as well. Although it does seem like it's actually flying a little bit nose down right now. So I'll be able to uh, get a nice average number out of the log after this flight and maybe fine tune that even better than it is right now. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with the analog feed right now as far as the, the image quality and uh, colors and white balance and everything. Now I notice the white balance is shifting a bit as I look around into the sun. But there's, at least not that I can find with the firmware that's on the analog side of the camera right now. I can't find a way to, uh, to set it to a manual white balance some birds up here. These are not the large birds. There's a little school flock of smaller birds. But yeah, you can see the airplane's definitely getting bumped around a little bit in the wind up here, which is another reason I wanted to fly a little bit higher, just so we'd have a little more, a little more wind. Another change I made, I raised the AHI one line in my uh, OSD, just so that it's a little closer match to the actual real horizon while I'm flying with the camera pointed somewhat down like I like to do with this low plane. I like to, to fly looking lower. And we're probably flying out of the range of one of my antennas right now. That's why we're seeing a little bit of noise in the video. And the diversity controller did just switch. So we are going to venture out this way a little bit. It's been a while since I flew out of this direction lately. But uh, we're just kind of taking a little bit of the scenery out here. Just kind of enjoying the airplane flying around a little bit while we're while we're out flying it, have some nice sunny light conditions so we'll be able to see what the uh, HD feed looks like after the flight. I'm going to edit the video, you're probably already watching it now. And you see we're kind of getting that video dropped out like I usually do out in this area, which is one reason I don't fly out here very much. There's some trees and things out in this direction between me and my antennas right now that tend to block my antenna when I fly this direction. See, that's actually our house over there in the edge of that field. You can see it. But we have a uh, couple of little stands of bushy trees out in the back behind my runway that tend to make video a little bit sketchy flying out in that direction. One day I'm going to trim those, kind of maybe even get rid of them. But for now, that's kind of what we have. So we are flying a little bit downwind right now. But obviously we have plenty of battery left. But I do want to kind of fly out over these ponds out in this area. So it's been quite a while since I've been out here. Just want to kind of check that out. We'll make a little loop out in this area. Then we'll head back and land. And uh, we'll be able to land from this direction. Which will give us a nice headwind on landing. We do have a little bit of a tailwind right now. About a 5 mile an hour wind. But yeah, I definitely like this 
the way it's flying right now after I increase the time constant for TECS. And that's just another parameter, it's literally TECS time constant, or it's TECS underscore time underscore C-O-N-S-T is the parameter. And default was, uh, I think it was 5. Yeah, default was 5, and your upper range is 10. I just raised it all the way up to 10, um, just to see what it would do, see the effect. And I do like the effect that it has. It seems to be flying a lot more smooth and consistently as far as throttle and, and pitch are concerned. Um, and then it is more windy today than it was on the flight yesterday too. And you see we still have some sun lighting the ground out here so we do have a little bit of thermal activity that's why we saw those birds out circling riding the thermals which also makes for some pretty rough air or relatively rough air anyway compared to what it was yesterday on a nice cooler overcast dead calm day like that you basically had no thermal activity which makes for really smooth air um so i definitely do like the improvement that we have with this and that's the main reason i wanted to fly again today and we do actually have another uh few days of windy weather coming up and then there's some rain forecast after that for a while kind of watching my uh, link quality my video is starting to drop in and out a little bit as you can see but i'm also getting some uh drop out on link quality so i'm actually going to head back over this direction which should let both of those stabilize a bit and or maybe I actually need to be further north because I think that little bend in the bayou that tree line there is actually blocking my signal so if we fly out this way we should see a bit of improvement actually we're seeing some low link quality kind of dropping in and out but it should improve as I get over this direction a bit and worst case we can always just let it fly itself home you see my video is rock solid again and link quality is coming back up into normal ranges. And I do see the dark spot along the light colored field way off in the distance out there. Right out there in the center of my OSD right now is where home is. So we do have a clear line of sight for that. So I guess at this point I can actually trigger return to launch and just let it fly home. Which I'm curious how it's going to do that because I do have my return home altitude is set to 200 feet. So if I remember right, it should linearly lose altitude so that it reaches 200 feet the moment it gets back to home. Or actually my rally point, which is set just out over the field south of home. Is where it's going to fly to. And we're just kind of here along for the ride, taking in the scenery. Letting the airplane fly itself and do its thing, and uh, again, this gives me an opportunity to uh, see how well it manages throttle in a completely autonomous mode, which cruise is basically fully autonomous as long as you're off the sticks anyway, so it's using all the same parameters and everything as it is right now. It's just right now I don't have any manual control. Or maybe I do. I don't know. I've ever never really tried it. Yeah, I can steer the airplane if I want to. It just kind of gets right back on course as soon as you center the sticks. It's the only difference if I turn, say I change the heading and I point the airplane over here. Now if I center the stick, it's going to correct and get back on the course for home. It's the only real difference. So yeah, I think we're getting pretty close to perfect now with the little airplane and we can uh, move on, either go on and start flying something else for a change of pace or maybe do some more with this one. As far as maybe fly some missions, set up some interesting missions or whatever and let it fly them or play around with uh, auto takeoff and landing. I've still never actually done an auto takeoff from the ground with this one. Or obviously an auto landing either. I haven't done that. But... I said earlier that I kind of wanted to do that with this little plane later because it has the landing gear 
and steerable nose wheel and everything. I'll be able to play around with some of those parameters for letting it take off from the runway and hopefully eventually be able to land back on the runway on its own. Um, now I don't have any kind of rangefinder for you know, precise altitude control near the ground. So any kind of auto landing would be relying on the barometer and I'm not sure how well that works. I need to read on, read into that. I know it's it's obviously going to work better with a rangefinder of some sort for precise altitude control, but maybe we'll better find out if it will do it without it or not. How well it it can. I don't know. We'll see. But that's all stuff for the future. Um one thing speaking of the future, one thing I did do I finally bit the bullet and I ordered a Walksnell HD kit. Um, I'm sure everyone's seen it by now, but a couple of days ago they announced the standalone receiver with HDMI out and they're basically giving it away just about. It's I think it's $190 for the receiver by itself or you can buy it in a bundle with a transmitter and a camera for like $199 for the little 1S tiny little air unit deal or you can get the, uh, the normal unit with the heatsink, with the nano or the micro camera. I went ahead and got the micro kit. Those two options are 249 or 239 rather. Um, but I went ahead and pre-ordered it. It's supposed to ship in December. Around December 10th is what uh, Cadex is estimating. So hopefully we'll have that to play with uh, next month. And I'm probably not gonna be in a big rush to get it in the air or anything. I wanna kinda play around with it on the ground a bit with the uh, OSD stuff, because I do intend it, intend to use it with Ordupilot. I'll try to get the full Ordupilot OSD working, and from my understanding, I should be able to do that with canvas mode. Um, but I'll play around with that and eventually fly it on something, and it should be pretty fun. And having the uh, standalone receiver with an HDMI output, I'll be able to uh, set that receiver up outside and fly with it like I'm doing right now, using my monitors at my desk, and I'll be able to record that in OBS and with a little HDMI capture device. Now, the only HDMI capture device that I currently have, it its max uh, performance is like 72060 or 108030. Um, it won't do 108060, but from what I understand, the Walksnail system will do 108060 output on the HDMI port. Um, so I'll probably end up getting a better capture device later, but the one I have right now will work good enough to fly and record and try it out. And like that, I'll be able to record the full OSD and everything using the HDMI output. And uh, I don't know, it should be pretty fun though. But basically for that price, I kind of had to try it. I said before that I really liked what I saw with the Walks Nail system as far as features and how it was developing and everything. Um, and then the last, the last part of the puzzle I was waiting for was that standalone receiver. And it looks like they did a really good job of that. So I figured it was time to try it out. And like I said, for 240 bucks, even if I don't like the system, it's worth it to fly it on one airplane anyway and try it. And I'm sure there will be people out there that love it. And if I don't, if, even if I hate it, I'm probably be able to resell it and get my money back or at least most of my money back. So, uh, I kind of had to do it and if you're interested I'll probably put a link below the video if you want it's not an affiliate link or anything I don't even know if any of the places that have affiliate accounts for or offering the pre-order right now but I'll put a link directly to Cadex page and you can look at it there but like I said you've probably already seen it I've seen pretty much everybody's been talking about that the last couple of days at least all the, the people that I pay attention to um, but anyway, the airplane's been loitering its its home waypoint right here, well, its rally point anyway, for a few minutes. Everything looks good. Um, pretty happy with the throttle performance and how it fixed my throttle surging, oscillation, whatever fluctuation, whatever the right term is. Everything looks good, feels good, works good. Um, I guess everything's good. <laughs> so, uh, thought I saw another bird off in this direction. It's been a small one. Um, as long as the HD performance, the HD video performance on the Runcam Hybrid in here works out good, I'm pretty happy with the way everything else looks as far as the analog side right now in both the cloudy conditions and the flight today in the sunny conditions. Now I did 
lower the contrast and raise the brightness to kind of help with those dark shadowy areas and it does look better at least today relative to yesterday but it's also really different conditions weather weather wise lighting between the two days so i don't know if that has you know plays a big point a big factor in it a big part but i don't know we'll keep flying it and see but so far it's getting to where i'm pretty happy with it i can settle for this So I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the fiber wire and cut the power and start losing some altitude and set up my landing and uh, get ready to end this flight. So I will thank you all for watching the video. Questions, comments, go below it. That always helps get the uh, video more noticed. And of course, likes and dislikes help as well. And uh, uh, as always, a huge thank you to monetary contributions from Patreon pledges and channel members. I actually use some of the money in my Patreon account to buy that Walksnail system. So, uh, I have you to thank for that. So, um, I'll go ahead and start my flare. Smooth it out. Nice smooth landing. Manual. I'll try to taxi back to the shed. And go ahead and end the video here soon, shortly. So, as always, thank you for watching the video, and it's going to be the end of this one. Go ahead and disarm. Disarmed. And there's my summary screen. And, uh, yeah, pretty happy with it. And uh, hopefully it's been enjoyable. So I will see you all in the next video. Thank you for watching this one.